Hi, everyone, and welcome uh, to our next uh, interview with IEPS team members. I'm here with Ganesha Dewani, the um, IEPS Partnerships Liaison Coordinator. So Ganesha has also served on the IEPS Executive Committee in, in also various roles, um, both in IEPS Global and in IEPS Asia. So Ganesha, how are you doing today? Hi, thank you, Justin, and thank you, everyone, for who will be viewing this recording and joining us in on the later part of the session. I've been doing great. Justin, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. So the first question that is a, usually kind of information about yourself. So you're welcome to talk about your academic background, um, your, your past involvements in IAPS, and any other information you'd like to share with political science students around the world. That's a really cool question to me. And I think uh, before answering this question, I should be thankful to whole IAPS community, including you, for having me here, I think since past two and a half or three years. It's been great while being a part of this academic community. And I joined back in 2019, I think, towards the uh, later part of 2019 as the project and events coordinator for IAPS Asia team, which is which then was a very tiny team because of the regionalization process that was occurring at that time. But it has been amazing to, you know, involve with different uh, events, projects, with different partners, with teammates from across the continent, and then um, trying my hands on arts and design while being a part of the PR team as the media coordinator, arts or design coordinator, to be precise. And then, you know, again, trying my hands on the program team with the global uh, team in, I think, in year 2020 as the deputy head for programs and then going ahead as VP for programs. So we have been doing amazing jobs at different positions. And personally, to me, these different jobs or different profiles have been really close to my heart because I have been constantly learning with them, constantly meeting with people, constantly developing my personality and skills. Inside, I think I have also learned a few things which definitely involve and I think which I should definitely motivate students to work on or focus on is to keep meeting people, keep engaging with people who belong to your community, seeking for advice, asking questions, be more open with your career prospects because I think very few people know, specifically my IFS Asia team is aware that when I joined the team, I was recovering from a, a major health accident. So IAPS was, I think, a very good blessing for me because I learned a lot during all my rest period. And it's been great because I have got the opportunity to meet different people again in different events. And yeah, that has been an amazing journey. Thank you so much, Justin. Okay, thank you so much. And I guess I think IAPS owes you a great deal of thanks as um you know, I think you you really helped out uh, when we needed, um, you know, extra, you know, volunteers, especially in terms of both uh, IAPS Asia and the programs department. You know, I think, um, you know, the efforts of, of your team in IAPS Asia really helped get uh, that Continental Association up and running. And it's now, you know, does all kinds of events, activities that engages with um, students in various countries and folks are watching this on YouTube and see on our YouTube channel that we, um, you know, all some of the uh, some of the many events that um, IFS Asia has done. And uh, in some cases, you know, engaging with students in countries that IFS hasn't engaged uh, with before. So uh, that's, that's been amazing. And also in the programs department, right, um, which is it's the programs, uh, the vice president for programs position in the programs department was, you know, a very new position, fairly new. And I think you really helped um, set some important precedents for that position that, um, that will be carried on in the future, which, uh, which is very important. And- Thank you so much, Justin. And I go the, is just so for folks who, who know, so folks know, um, are, what are you studying right now? Okay, so that's a very tricky question. And um, many of people do ask me if I'm doing my master's or if I'm doing a job. So um, I'm doing my doctoral studies as of now and supporting part-time to EU India policy dialogue support facility here in India, which has been a great uh, project. My doctoral studies is all about urban governance and sustainability here in Indian cities. So that's the academic background, which I'm currently pursuing. 
Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And so I guess with, with for the next question, um, you know, how is, uh, I guess you're, we can maybe combine this and maybe talk about your experience as a member of the IAPS executive committee and your current role that kind of specializes in engaging the partners and stuff in the international cooperation department. So um, I know what the, the mandate is kind of, it's still early on. So um, I guess how, how those experiences been and what are some accomplishments that, uh, that you're proud of? Okay, I should uh, not be starting, but yeah, again, a very funny element about the executive meetings of things because I do miss the meetings, to be very open. I do miss the executive meetings with all you colleagues and, um, you know, answering the questions or stating the updates or checking for if you are there, if you are listening to us and we have this update and that. So I miss being the part of the executive committee and contributing towards the core policy framework, what IAPS works for or the vision that IAPS support. So that has been the one missing point, like very, um, to be very precise. But on our broader terms, I think um, IAPS executive committee, be it in you know, any department, take it academic or PR, or uh, for example, take it like uh, programs, all have been doing really amazing job and I love the uh, you know the point that all the teams are very interconnected or very interwoven so they really work very close not only with the departments but also with the regional teams so it's been really you don't feel like that you are far from your team but you're still working together you're still working independently and the best part about IAPS what I love is there is no hierarchy so you're always free to jump into another department and seek for advice or you know help them whenever required so we definitely don't follow hierarchy and that is what, what which is like my favorite part about IFs and it gives you more opportunity to learn. Uh, while talking about my present role, which hasn't been, you know, um, in reality, uh, I think in last past years. So this position is pretty new, which is the part of, uh, partnership and liaison coordinator with international cooperation and PR department. So. Many of students might know that IAPS has been engaging with different partners and we have been building a huge uh, board of network with us. So it becomes important for us to again bring uh, those partners back into the realm and revive them and reactivate them with all those um, projects and events we do. And hats off to all the regional teams, the SRCs, they are doing amazing with their regional events or with their targeted theme specific events. So we feel a need to bring or you know, to um, highlight our partners back again and uh, talk to them converse, with them, converse with them because it's such a small community and we need to support each other again and again whenever required. And you, uh, I think you are the best person to tell like how we have supported different partners and how they have supported us in different events, you know, uh, be it sending delegates or representing IF's community at different platforms. So it's been a blessing. Um, because I have been involving with different partners and then getting onto such a position where you have to take care of the partnerships. So I think it's something which I have been learning since I joined IAPS and now I'm turning things into reality when it comes to partnerships. So in a nutshell, yes, it's been really great over here. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing. And so I guess as we're kind of just starting the 2021-2022 mandate, what are some things that um, you would like to work on or some, some, some plans that you have uh, for the rest of the year? And is there anything you'd like members to be aware of that might be upcoming in the future? Uh, what I believe that IAPS is a platform where students do love to learn about what the actual career prospect of their subjects that they are reading is all about. And to me as a scholar, I have been always seeking for these kind of opportunities. If I was aware about IAPS when I was graduating, I would have turned my career into a different pathways. And so I believe for the upcoming students and the upcoming um, um, the young people or the young communities as well. For, you know, to engage more members, I believe that IAPS can definitely lean on to the local universities or the national universities that are deciding in the uh, different nations or different continents. We have been doing an amazing job with them, but I think we still need to promote our events and uh, maybe the programs or the projects that we are handling with different universities to bring in more students or to promote it um, you know, up to the grassroots level. So that is one. 
the other thing that i believe is that um i think the networking thing which is very important because i hold to uh, this background which i belong to a partnership or a liaison coordinator i believe that networking is the key so keep building the network keep com- uh, connecting with the partners who belong to same fraternity or kind of same fraternity from different regions so that is another take away for uh, increasing the membership i believe uh with respect to the dream dream project sorry which i would love to have at iaps one of them is being turned into reality now which is the workshop on sustainable governance and uh, political transformation that is going to happen soon and i would request students to take part in that because that is one of a kind of workshop that we are doing the programs department is doing and i'm very thankful to them for um, taking that legacy ahead so that is one project the another project was about um, making youth more empowered by holding some of these stimulation sessions with the local governance that we were planning to do with iaps asia but i think it can be replicated in different continents so how youth can be empowered politically while they are residing in their cities or in their villages so empowering local participation of youth in the local governance be it urban governance or rural governance so that is the number 2 idea and number 3 which will be um, i think which will, which will be you know very um, happening very soon as about the networking event that we are planning to hold so there would be a informal discussion series or informal discussion sessions with the different partners from across the globe be it the any association if you are working in different region so i would also request other regional teams and the associations to bring in their partners on board for them to engage with us to find the gaps and to you know suggest possible opportunities for everyone so that can i think that will be can build a good community iaps community basically which is across the globe spreading across the globe and sharing our ideas by the i think by these kind of associations Okay so thank you so much and yeah that's uh, definitely would definitely be a benefit to get more youth involved uh, at the local grassroots level I think that's very important um, both for IEPS and for student government student representation in general I think we're in great need of that um, and especially for students um, at the local level to be cognizant of what's going on at the international level when we do meetings with other student governments you know go to the the UN other meetings of other governing bodies and the international political science association and recommend um you know changes for policies and stuff so that's uh yeah very important indeed and so the next question gets a little bit more theoretical so i know that you sort of touched upon uh, some a- aspects of this but um i guess thinking in in the long term future so as there may be students watching from future years what is your vision for the future of iaps so what uh, what do you think iaps should do what direction do you think iaps uh, should go in what would you like what would you like to see in in future years or even or even this year that's a very tricky question to answer while sitting in the present moment or the present time that we are doing but i can definitely have a prospect of how iaps is going to look like in the upcoming years so many of us are not aware that iaps do contribute to different communities and associations that are working globally we do run a student program a global student program as well to support student communities and associations working across the globe we have supported united nations in their uh, consultations or we have supported i think uh, unfuna in uh, you know running their or supporting their projects as well so that has been the hidden element that iaps has been doing from time to time seeing all those events and more than these events i believe that some day iaps will be having representatives who will be sitting in the you know big general assemblies like united nations to represent the views of the student communities and keeping my fingers crossed this is going to happen so i again you know call for students or people who have the background or who have the not even the background but have the thought process to contribute towards the betterment of a bigger community through their education to come forward and seek for more knowledge and advice or even to share their thoughts and ideas with us so i am definitely going to hold these kind of events in upcoming future where there i think the 
majority of the events talking about world congress or the uh, study trips or the summer schools that we organize it's been great that how we partner not only with the universities but the great associations that somehow you know play a role in directly in the policy making for example i think i would cite an example over here which you and me are part of which is about asf asia europe foundation arc8 so we are indirectly contributing by being a part of that uh, community towards the policy making for inclusive higher education both in asia and europe and setting some standards for internationalization of education higher education so i think seeing because we are going ahead with all those um, changes and paths so i believe that iit is going to contribute a lot towards the bigger uh, policy making policy areas as well as to the challenges because we have been time to time considering global issues be it pandemic or be it the uh, crisis that we have noticing on different other areas of the globe so we have been also interacting with uh, experts on those notions as well so we are not only highlighting the positive part of politics but also highlighting the negative part which is a good uh, i would say a good sign of an association without you know involving and or supporting any political ideology we are still supporting different issues from across the globe and um, be open with every other regional teams or every other regional associations that we have been working so it's been a really great experience and i think students should learn because even if you are contributing or if you are belonging to a smallest regional team for example if you are a country coordinator you are still contributing to iips on a bigger picture so feel free to again you know to give ideas and participate as much as I, as much as you can i think yeah that's what iips holds in future it will be a bigger community i believe of more active students well thank you i think uh, yeah that's uh, definitely um, i definitely agree with that as it's i think sometimes it seems that you know the future of the global student movement um depends on organizational organizations like iips um you know stepping up and making uh, their voices heard and for those um who are watching so gadisha mentioned the project uh, that one of our partners the asia europe foundation is working on and which we're helping with so it's the arc 8 project and as gadisha mentioned it's about um you know making education more more inclusive and especially in terms of its, of its digital aspects in the 21st century So we definitely encourage you to take a look at the Asia Europe uh, Foundation's website and the Arc 8 project to uh to have whether you can find some more information on, on what we've been working on there and there's probably will be some kind of report uh, coming out uh, either 2021 or 2022 that uh, kind of summarizes what we've recommended to policymakers around the world so that's uh, very yeah, exciting that's so sorry to interrupt i think this is the beauty of working at iis we are still promoting uh, our partner organization and this is how we network so do have a look to arc 8 report and arc 8 conference which is going to happen soon on september 10th so that's going to happen soon and uh, another interesting part just since i just um extending another line to it so um my favorite event at iis asia or iis in general has been um, i think the all the you know asf contribution number one number two the um uh, conference the academic conference we had with the university of mongolia number two i think sorry number three is the um eu political career fair which i remember was a very interesting collab with them and we were there to talk to students directly which was one of a kind moment for us so that has been the good events and other the most important one was the un 75 consultations engaging with different experts in a nutshell i think i have give you opportunity to at at a one time you to learn and on the other hand it also offers you the opportunity to speak up so it's one of a kind organization again to say that okay well yeah well thank thank you for adding uh, that that this again like you're already you're already ahead of the game here because you're already talking about things mm-hmm. i think in in our in our next uh, question so kind of thoughts on a special project that you'd maybe like to explain in, in a bit more detail and um, maybe something that you're working on or something that you'll you'll be working on this year or something else that's um that's coming up in the future even if it's not um I apps for Layla I know some folks talked about their other involvements but it's the floor is yours. 
Uh -huh. So um, I would like to highlight two projects over here. One is the one that we had previously and the other one which we will be planning shortly. So the previous one was about the UN 75 consultation. I know every other regional team and the global team was super excited and super nervous to launch those consultations under different themes. And I, at that time, was working with IH Asia team and I uh, supported the team while hosting two of the consultations and 10 of uh, social media live, uh, you know, live interviews with different experts. So that was a great experience because you were not only uh, contributing to the team, but also interacting with the people, those who were actually working at the ground level with youth. So that was very important. And we got youth from different regions, be it from the civil society organization, from arts background, or uh, be it from the organization that was supporting disabled people or disabled youth communities, or the organization, those who are working closely with the universities, youth communities as well. So that was in a nutshell as, as a wholesome experience for myself to work at ISN to realize that fact that, okay, we are going to contribute something very concrete out of these consultations and with these interviews. The interviews were really good because the uh, those expert people who are always into that set formal criteria or set formal work environment were very open into those interviews and they were sharing their experiences very lively with us. So yes, that was one experience. And the second one, which I talked about, uh, you know, organizing some youth empowerment programs, which make them feel uh, more empowered and participated in the local governance is the project that we again wish to uh, implement with IFS Asia team. I might not be there to support the team technically, but I will support them to nudge partners or uh, the better organization to support the youth community and the uh, stimulation session that they are planning. So that is again, one of the dream projects that I wish to work on. And it's really close to my heart again, because somehow it is related to my doctoral thesis as well. So yes, it's been close. That, uh, that that sounds amazing and um, yeah I definitely encourage uh, folks watching to, 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 to check that out or stay tuned for for when um, what announcements go out uh, about it so I guess that uh, sort of wraps up our questions for now but usually we close by um, just sit, like if you have anything else that you would like to share with political science students around the world uh, both today and um, and in the future uh, to conclude here. Um, is there anything you would like to tell them? Uh -huh, that's, uh, that's a very emotional question because I belong to this discipline and you, so, so do you. So I think it's been really close to each one of us while answering this question. So we as students, we do realize that we find different hurdles while pursuing studies in these kind of subjects or we do not have this much of support, specifically belong, belonging to the Asian countries. I feel that there has been lack of support in terms of disciplinary subject wise, because there has been more uh, chances or more opportunities for the technical subjects as compared to what we study um, as the political science or the humanities or social sciences subjects. So I believe is that to keep looking for opportunities, to keep connecting, as I said previously, but to again, you know, not to discourage yourself by uh, seeing what is happening around is just to focus on your study area and just to contribute the best you can. Definitely IPS community is there to support you. We all are reachable. Uh, you can just log into our website and connect with us or you can just uh, check our social media handles and connect with us. So we are definitely here to support. And uh, we would definitely in near future would try to jump in into the other career fairs which are going to happen in different nations to be there as um, maybe the representative or as a helper or as a helping hand to the students who are studying in that specific nation. That is again, you know, one of um, the possible, uh, possible program or the project that I wish to work on is to collaborate more with career fairs that are organized in different nations to reach out to maximum students as we can. And last but not the least, which is uh, my recommendation to students is to, um, I think, um, keep connecting with, not only with the association like us, but, but also with the other association that are supporting us to a very you know lower scale, be it the 
civil society organization located in your country think tanks which are there or also for the universities so keep supporting your university as well and contributing to the maybe the tiniest political process happening over there so that is how we do contribute and again i'm repeating myself we will be definitely there to support you feel free to reach out to us and i can definitely share my mail id towards the end of uh, this session or maybe just writing it to liaison at the rate ifs.org so being it more open and connecting me for more opportunities i can you know be the connecting pen to link to the other team members as well for the advice that you seek to wish so yeah stay motivated and stay connected to each other okay well thank you so much that uh, that was some there were some some wise words to uh, to leave us with here so Thank you everyone and thank you so much Ganesha for for doing this interview and on behalf of political science students around the world thank you so much for all that you've done to help um IEPs both um in Asia and and globally uh, as well it's uh, we we really appreciate uh, your your contributions and we definitely look forward to um all the amazing things that um you'll be working on this year Thank you so much Justin it's been really kind that you have been uh, you know very active and you have invited me over here to share my experiences and this goes without saying that thanks to you for looking after IEPs a whole huge community i would like love to highlight this point again that um, Justin as a president has been really great with all ups and downs with all our relocation from the old office to the new one now IEPs is in Canada just for your knowledge so um i think the contribution what justin has been doing as president has been amazing and to all the department heads as well and the people working in the department so thank you so much for having me here again and uh, i wish everyone good luck with their studies or the work that they are doing thank you again oh well thank you so much for the kind words and so for for those who might be watching who maybe have stumbled across this video and are wondering what IEPs is uh, we definitely encourage you to check out the IEPs website and learn more about uh, who we are and and what we do so we're the student government that represents political science students around the world and you can either sign up as an individual or you can get your school to sign up so all of your students will have voting rights and access to our events and opportunities so we definitely encourage you to to stay in touch with us and uh, and to get involved so thank you so much kanisha and uh thank you everyone